Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing six recipes with you, but all of these recipes are going to be using five ingredients. I have been asked loads of times over the last weeks and a couple of months for videos just like this. So I really hope you guys find it useful. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to do so. I post loads of videos like this and every single Sunday I do post a brand new foodie video on my channel. So if you like that kind of thing, then I would love for you to press that red button down below and turn it gray. Also over my Instagram, I post loads of foodie inspiration as well. So I'll link that down below, but I would love for you to go over and follow me there too. So I'm gonna jump straight into this video and start with tonight's dinner. I am making like an open top pie. For this video, I'm using some puff pastry, some pesto, some sun-dried tomatoes, and some cheese. You can add loads of different toppings onto this recipe as well, but I am using these four so that we can have a side salad with this as well. It's a really, really simple and easy recipe recipe and it'll only take you about 15 minutes to make. What you first of all need to do is start off by rolling your puff pastry out onto a baking tray. I just leave it on the parchment paper that it comes with because it just saves on washing up and it means it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. What you want to do is just go around and prick your puff pastry with a fork and then you just want to pop it into your oven on 190 for about five minutes just to kind of like blind cook. If you don't do this you'll just have a really soggy bottom once you add all your other ingredients on. So this is a real key point of your cooking. So what I am going to do today is I am adding some pesto as my base, but you can add passata, you can add tomato puree, you can add a red pesto on the bottom as well. There are so many different varieties with this. What I'm then going to do is chop up some of these sun-dried tomatoes and just scatter them around along with some grated cheese. Like I said, this meal can be varied so much with whatever you want. You can add salami, you can add ham in here, olives, Honestly, the list goes on. So it's a really great meal because it is just so versatile. Once you've got all your toppings on, you want to pop it back into the oven, keeping it at 190 degrees, and cook for a further 12 minutes or until everything's nice and golden on the top. Once you've done that, you're ready to take it out the oven, cut it into sections, and serve with your side salad. Right, so for dinner tonight, I am making a sausage and fennel risotto. This is a really, really easy and delicious recipe. If you've been watching me for a while, you would have probably seen this on my channel before because I do cook it quite often for my family. But it is five ingredients um, and it couldn't be easier to be honest. So I'm gonna just turn the camera around and show you the ingredients I'm going to be using. So for this recipe, you need some sausages, you need a fennel, I've got three cloves of garlic, a vegetable stock cube and some risotto rice. So obviously, if I was catering for just the four of us, I would probably use half the amount of sausages so five sausages or if you buy a six pack um, I'd use half the fennel um, I'd probably use two cloves of garlic I'd still use a whole veg stock um, and then I would use like half the amount of this risotto which is this is a 500 gram bag but I would probably use 250 but today I'm going to cook everything because um, I want to have some leftovers because it's always good to have this in the fridge for lunches or anything like that so I'm using all 10 of these sausages a whole fennel three garlic cloves and then with this veg stock I'll add about a thousand mils of water but I just kind of like top it up as I go along if I do need more and then I'll use all 500 grams of this risotto too. So the first thing I want to start off by doing is dice your fennel up quite finely. Your fennel is basically going to be like your onion, so however fine you would dice your onion, that's how finely you want to dice your fennel. If you can't find a fresh fennel bulb in your local supermarket, then don't worry because you can actually substitute this with one teaspoon of fennel seeds. So if you go down the herb aisle, that's where you will find your fennel seeds and they'll last in your cupboard for so long as well. You just want to brown that off a little bit and then add in your crushed garlic cloves. Next up you want to add in your sausages and brown those off so what I like to do with my sausages is I like to take the skins off them because sometimes the skins can go a little bit stringy if you leave them on so I just run a knife along the sausage and then peel the skin away discard of that and pop in all the nice um, pork mince into your pan once you've done that you're then ready to add in your 500 grams of risotto rice along with a thousand mils of vegetable stock keep on stirring it through pop the lid on and let it simmer for about 25 minutes 
bits but just keep stirring in between if you think you need any more liquid at any time don't be shy to add it because the risotto rice will soak up so much liquid you want to keep your lid on because that steams your risotto rice through and it cooks it a lot quicker once you've been cooking for about 25 minutes give your risotto rice a little taste and if it's nice and tender you're then ready to serve if you want to add one more ingredient this recipe works really well with some parmesan cheese on top or just some plain cheddar as well but if you want to keep it to five ingredients then this is just delicious as it is Right, so for dinner tonight, I am making a chicken tray bake. This meal is, again, really, really versatile. You can put in here whatever you want. So today, I've got some boneless chicken thighs. I've got two peppers, I've got two courgettes, and I've also got two really, really big potatoes. So what I'm going to do is just pop the chicken thighs into a baking dish as they are. I'm not going to chop them up, but that's completely optional to you if you'd prefer them chopped up. I'm also then just going to roughly chop all the other veggies and the potatoes into sort of similar sizes so they all cook at the same sort of rate throughout. And then what I've also got here is some vegetable stock. So I've got 200 mils of vegetable stock here and that's gonna be almost like my sauce when it comes to this dish. And then I'm going to sprinkle some paprika on the top before I pop it in the oven. I'm not counting this paprika as one of my um, ingredients because these are the kind of things that I have in my cupboards all the time. I don't need to buy any more for like months on end. So this is just kind of like a nice little seasoning to put on top of it but other than that you've got your five ingredients here that's going to make a really delicious meal so as you can see my baking tray is completely full of veggies and chicken and everything like that but once it starts to cook all the veggies do shrink down so much so don't worry that's why it's really important to mix them halfway through because you want to make sure you're bringing your chicken to the top I would even put a little bit more paprika and salt and pepper on when you are mixing them up as well, just to make sure everything is evenly coated and everything does have that nice paprika on top of it. So you just wanna pop it into the oven on 190 for about 40 to 50 minutes. Um, give it a good stir after about 25 minutes and then, yeah, like I said, just put it in for another kind of like 20 to 25 minutes as well and then you're ready to dish it up and I promise you it's so delicious. Like I said, this dish is really versatile. It's so nice with like chicken and chorizo in there as well, with some sausages. You can do so many different things and you can also have so many different veggies in here as well and obviously sweet potatoes work really well in this as well. What I'm making tonight is a one pot pasta. So um, in this, it's so easy. You literally cook everything in the same pot. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I've done these before. So this is the pot that I um, cook it in. It's a big Le Creuset pot and it fits loads and loads in here. And I always cook 500 grams of pasta whenever I make this meal because I just have some leftovers then which will last me for the next day for lunches. So my five ingredients for this meal are, I've got pasta, I've got garlic and herb Philadelphia, I've got one lemon, I've got some asparagus, and I've also got a vegetable stock as well. So I'm gonna start off by cooking my pasta in a thousand mils of vegetable stock. I always use boiling water for this because it just speeds up the whole cooking process completely. As your pasta's cooking, just make sure you keep stirring it to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan. While that's cooking away, I will chop up my asparagus, and what I do is I snap off the base of the asparagus here because this is kind of like a woody bit at the base here and it's not nice to eat. So as you can see, you just snap it at the base and wherever it snaps off is like its natural place where it should be taken away. You want to discard of the base pieces and then chop up the rest of the asparagus into little cubes. After your pasta's been cooking for about five to seven minutes and it's starting to go nice and soft, you're then ready to add in your Philadelphia. So because I'm doing 500 grams of pasta, I'm going to add in this whole 170 gram Philadelphia pot. This is going to add so much flavor to my pasta. I'm also going to add in the whole juice of this lemon as well. And finally, when there's just one or two minutes left for my pasta to cook, I will add in my asparagus. I don't want to add my asparagus in too soon, otherwise it will overcook and it'll become kind of really soft. I want that to be almost a little bit al dente. You don't need to add any cheese when you serve this up because you're obviously putting all of the Philadelphia in there. So the only thing that's left to do once your asparagus has gone a little bit soft is to serve up and enjoy. Really, really simple meal. This is like a 10 minute meal and it's really Really delicious too. For dinner tonight I am making burritos so I have got a huge 750 um, grams of 5% um, fat 
steak mint. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my five ingredients, but I don't want you to think I'm cheating with this. But what I do, like probably every two weeks or so, I make up a massive, massive batch of like a sweet tomato-y kind of sauce. And this sauce I keep in my fridge. I keep half of my fridge and half of my freezer. And I take, like I use the first lot that's in the fridge the first week. And then the second lot I take out the freezer and use it the second week. And this is my kind of like tomato-y sauce when it comes to making shepherd's pie, cottage pie, lasagna, so many different things. So I'm going to be using about three or four um, ladles of that in my dish today so this um, this sauce I'm going to put the recipe down below but it's so good but obviously there's a lot more than five ingredients in here because I've got onions garlic stock peppers in here tomatoes um, but like I said it's something that I just make up in batch and it doesn't cost very much at all and then I just ladle out some whenever I need it so I'm going to be using that today in my recipe so I really hope you don't think that's cheating because it's just something that I always do and I always just use it as one of my ingredients other than that I have got 750 grams of beef mints here I have got this fajita seasoning as well um, I've got some cheddar cheese which I'm going to grate on top of them and I've obviously got some wraps as well because because I've got so many veggies in my um, sauce, the, the tomato -y sauce here, I feel like I don't need to serve this with any veggies because there's so many in here that the kids are going to get them into their bodies. But if you wanted to, you could serve this with a, like a broccoli or something on the side or some rice as well, but that would take you over your five ingredients. But we just like it just like this. We have two fajitas each and it's just enough for us to fill us all up. So to make this recipe, what you want to start off by doing is browning your milk meat. I think for me having quite a lot of meat in each burrito is quite important because obviously that's what's going to fill you all up so you don't want to have like a little bit of meat in each one that's why I am using 750 grams for this meal for us tonight. So you just brown that off and then once you've browned it you want to go in and add in your fajita mix. I have got a barbecue fajita mix and then I'm also going to add in three or four ladles of my little tomato sauce that I've made here. Once that's all mixed together I am then ready to construct my burrito mix so I literally just ladle some of the mixture into each one of these wraps, roll them up and pop them into a baking tray. I then grate cheese, put it all over the top and then put it into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes on 180 degrees or until all your cheese has melted and your wraps have become a little bit crispy. Right, so for today's dinner, I am making some egg fried rice. This is another meal that's so versatile, but the like fundamental parts of it are rice and eggs, obviously. Um, and then obviously soy sauce as well. So what I'm adding with it today is some bacon. I've got six rashes of bacon here and some peas. Lots of time when I make it as well, I'll make it meat free. So I just have an onion, some garlic, loads of peppers and lots of different um, veggies. Maybe some of those little like frozen mixed veggie packs. They're also really, really good as well. When it comes to eggs, I usually do one per person plus one for luck so today I am using five eggs in here and then I will also do about two cupfuls of rice usually if I'm serving rice with a meal I'll just do one cup for the four of us but because this is going to be our main meal and there won't be any kind of sides to it I'm going to be using two cups of rice today and that will be absolutely plenty for all of us with just these five ingredients this dinner is going to be so delicious especially because the bacon will let off loads of its own kind of fats and flavors so it really gives the whole dish extra flavor so the first thing I'm going to do is start off with cooking my rice bring it to the boil and then let it simmer for 10 minutes always keeping the lid on once it's been simmering for 10 minutes turn it off completely and just leave it after you've turned your hob off you are then ready to start frying off your bacon so I just dice mine up into little pieces and then I fry it off until they're really nice and crispy once my bacon is nice and crispy I'll then add in my peas as well I do also add in a little splash of water as well because sometimes the bacon can get quite dry and stick to the bottom so I want to have a little bit of liquid in there once my peas have defrosted I then push all of my mixture to the side of the pan crack in my five eggs and scramble them in the center. I don't scramble them in with my peas and my bacon at first as I just let the egg scramble by itself. Once it's scrambled nicely I will then mix all of the bacon and peas back into the egg mixture. I'll add in my rice and then finally add in my soy sauce. I don't add any salt to the dish because the soy is quite salty itself as well as the bacon. So at the end if you want to just give it a taste and see if it needs any black pepper but other than that your dish is ready to eat. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up or a comment down below to let me know you did enjoy it so I know to make more videos like this. Once again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.